I'm Dean Cipolla and this is the Azure Academy. Continuing with our migration series, let's start to talk about how we handle disaster recovery or business continuity events in the cloud. So we're going to take this in a bunch of stages. So today we're just going to give a quick high level easy one-off how do you do it get started session so here we are in the azure portal and first we're going to take a, a look at what i've already got inside my resource groups i've got one here in the central us and i've already got a vm created and a virtual network disaster recovery in the cloud could mean a lot of stuff so let me specify what i mean first of all it is not backup Backup and DR are two separate things. It is also not high availability. High availability is something that happens within the region or within the zone. It's workload kind of uh, workload dependent. Um, it's something where you'd put like multiple VMs in an availability set or availability zone. You'd have uh, multiple tiers of your application. Th these are all high availability features. Disaster recovery means something has happened where this system is running and now I need it to be running somewhere else. If you look at disaster recovery in that light, say you're on-prem data center, you're running on-prem, everything's looking great, you're having a nice day, and then all of a sudden there's a fire in the data center. Oh boy, that's bad. So what we need to do is initiate disaster recovery policies and get things moving out of that data center, running somewhere else while we deal with the disaster. After the disaster is over, then we can look at moving our stuff back into the data center. That's the kind of disaster recovery that we're talking about. So this is not migration from one place to another, although disaster recovery can sort of fit under that, as you'll see. But this is where something's gone wrong, and now we got to get out of here and get our workload running somewhere else. So with that in mind, let's click on this VM. And right inside the VM blade, down here in the operations section, we have disaster recovery. Now, disaster recovery utilizes the Azure Recovery Vaults, which I'm sure you'll remember from our series on Azure Backup. And what disaster recovery does within that vault is it says that we're going to replicate this virtual machine from where it's located, in this case, Central US, to somewhere else. And right now it's going to East US 2. So let's change this and let's say Canada Central. And I can see our graphic here updated. And let's change it again. Let's say uh, West US 2. And there you can see we're moving and West US. Okay, so wherever you do it, we're giving you this little graphic to indicate what exactly is going on. Once you've selected the region that you want to move to, then we hit next here and we get some more advanced features. Now this is where we're going to set up that other environment and get our VM up and running. So there's a bunch of different stuff here. So let me open all of this. And uh, it does look like quite a lot, but we'll walk through all the details. So first of all, we could disaster recover from one subscription to another. That's one choice. Another choice here is what resource group we're going to go to. Now, it, it tells us that it's going to create this resource group here by default. Same name as what we had before, just a dash ASR on the end of it. And that's fine for now. now we also need a virtual network. So we'll, again, append dash ASR to it. And if you want to specify one ahead of time, you can as well. And then it's what kind of high availability are we going to have when we go to that other region? Are we going to be a single standalone instance or are we going to build ourselves an availability set? And you can again select there. And if zones are available in your present workload, they will be available as a failover as well. Now, once you go beyond that, the other components that we need are a storage account for caching. And this is located in the region where the VM is currently living okay so in this case I'm in central US so this cache storage account will be spun up in central US and the purpose of it is we're going to replicate our data 
from the VM to the storage account within the same region. So performance is at its absolute maximum. Then we're going to replicate this storage account using basically GRS storage replication to send the data to the other region. So a little different, but basically that's the mechanism. So we're going to send it to the other region. Once it's in the other region, we will then be ready to perform a failover. And when we do, we have the option of choosing what kind of disk we're going to spin up. Now this disk type is very much dependent on the size and skew of the VM. So if you pick a VM with the S in the name, then you have the option of choosing the premium and the SSDs and, and all of that. If you don't have that in the name, you, then you're stuck with the regular hard disk drives. You pick the disk that you need for the failover. Keep in mind that when you do the failover, you do not necessarily need the same performance that you had in the primary region. It depends on your requirements in a DR event. Do you need the same performance? Do you need the same availability, the same uptime? Do you have to qualify for all those nines that everyone always looks for? Uh, do you have to maintain patching in that DR event? Do you have to plan to be in a DR for a limited period of time or an unknown maximum period of time. These are all things that will shape how you do your DR strategy. The other two big factors that people usually call out when they talk about DR is the RTO and the RPO. And this is the recovery time objective, how fast do we want to be up and running, and the recovery point objective. Where, what is the point in time? How much data can we afford to lose when we go into this DR event? Okay, so now let's look at the replication settings. Now what this stuff is going to indicate is where is the recovery vault? And this is the vault that I'm going to use this Azure Academy DR. And this is located in another region other than where my main resource group and VM are located. This is important because remember, when you're doing DR, you're presuming that the original region is basically a smoking crater. So we need the resource group to be somewhere else. We need the recovery vault to be somewhere else so that we can execute the failover. So this recovery vault is in another resource group and that's also called Azure Academy DR and that is located somewhere outside of the central region where my VM is located. And then we have to create a replication policy which we'll look at some of the details of that in a minute. And then down here we have a extension setting and this is for update extensions and we have two choices to allow ASR to manage this or we will manage this manually. If we choose ASR, it's going to stand up a automation account. And this is so that we can manage all of the extensions that may be attached to our VM in the primary region so that they can be replicated to the failover region. All right, so all of these settings look good. So I'm going to hit the next so we can review all of this. And there's the plan that we're going to execute for this one singular VM. And you can also scale this up, which we'll do later, for multiple VMs. So we're going to create all of this stuff. Let's hit Start Replication. All right, and we look at the notification here, and it says that we are enabling replication for one VM. And we'll click on that, and we're looking here at the site recovery job, which tells us what we're doing here. Right now, we're registering the server, which means that we are installing basically a extension onto the VM that tells it that we're going to be replicating it. While this is going on, let me go back to our recovery vault. So the site recovery job, right now we have onboarded uh, the system. We're mapping our networks. So where are we going to map that network to? Well, we can find that here, and that's going from central U.S. to west U.S. So where is it creating all this stuff? Well, let's look inside our Azure resource group. And this is in the West US region, so it's just like our original, but with the dash ASR on it. These are our original resources, and now we're spinning up a virtual network over in this other region. 
So looking at the first virtual network that we had, it was in a 10 dot slash 24 address space. And let's look at the other one. And you can see this is also in a 10 dot address space. Now, normally speaking, when it comes to virtual networks, when they're connected to your on-prem environment, this would not be good. Because if we have a 10 dot slash 24 in region one, and then we have a 10 dot slash 24 in region two, and we connect them both to on-prem, how do we know which one to route to? Okay, so that's why this kind of thing is not recommended. This is a single VM in Azure in a disconnected state, so this is perfectly fine because all virtual networks in Azure are independent from each other until you peer them together. This one will not be able to be peered with the original because appearing requires that all of the address spaces are unique. So we go here to this original and it says, no, I'm sorry, you can't do this because they overlap and you can't do that with peering. All right, so let's look at our Azure Academy DR resource group since that's also in the West US. And we see here that we have our storage account for caching and that's in the central region. Again, the purpose of it being that it's going to replicate the data from our original original VM locally. Okay, so looking at the vault, we'll go into site recovery here, and we see that now we've got an Azure VM and a cache storage account that will then replicate over across the barrier to another region where the vault is located. All right, so right now we see that we've got one job still in progress to enable replication. So the prerequisite checks have been passed. We're installing the mobility services agent, which is that extension. Once that is done, replication will start to kick off. So let's take a little break from all of that and look more at the site recovery infrastructure. This is where we define all of the things that are necessary to do site recovery for Hyper-V environments or virtual machine manager environments. And those are on-prem scenarios as well as VMware and physical systems on premise and then we have the Azure based scenarios so let's take a look so we've got our virtual network map this is where we're going to say our central US migration dash zero zero VNet is mapped to migration dash zero zero VNet dash ASR in the West US and we've also got another map going the other way Okay, so these are companions with each other. Then we have to create our replication policy. Here is our current replication policy and it has basically two factors. This is our recovery point and that is retaining the specific recovery point, say as soon as our first uh, replication is complete, that's a recovery point. And I'm gonna hold on to that recovery point for 24 hours. After 24 hours, that original gets thrown away. So it matters of how long you want to hold on to a recovery point before you're throwing it away. So the smaller you make this number, the more rapid it's going to be, but that means the more churn. And if it's the more churn, then it's a matter of latency. And are you doing too much churn where you're not be able to catch up? So you try to find a nice balance. So 24 hours, certainly a good safe place to start. And then there is the app consistent snapshot frequency. This frequency here you can see can be done anywhere from 1 to 12 hours in frequency or you can just turn it off. So if you're in a particular system that cannot use app consistency then just shut it off. Save yourself some extra cycles. All right, and replication has been enabled and we are now performing the initial replication. Now this will take some time and then we'll continue on with showing the actual failover test so you can see what that looks like. All right, so our replication has been enabled and let's close out of this job. So you can see a few other jobs came up after that where we actually went to protect the items. And the basic uh, time frame here on this particular VM with whatever else was going on in the cloud was roughly an hour before this VM was fully protected. So let's take a look at what that looks like here under replicated items. And then we see my on-prem VM from my Hyper-V server and the new one that we are protecting. So clicking on that, we can see all of the information relevant to that, the VM, the cache storage account, where it's replicating to, what region that goes into, and how many disks are involved. We also have some items up here saying that the successful uh, last failover has never been done, so we want to do that, and that it's currently protected, and our RPO here is from 45 minutes ago. 
All right, and that is our first replication event. So as replication continues, this uh, period of time here will shift around a little bit. So looking at the properties, we see the full description of everything that we have and what we're going to be protecting it with and what the configuration for that is like. And we can see a breakdown of that information here under compute and network or under disks. And that'll show us all the particular details. So now let's actually do a failover here. So let's go back to our virtual machine and you could do this of course from the VM or from the recovery vault. We'll click on disaster recovery Okay, and that brings us to the same screen. So now we're going to hit here on the test failover and when we perform the test, the test happens in a isolated bubble and you pick whatever the uh, particular recovery time that you want. So I'll pick our latest here and which network we're going to fail this over to and then we'll hit OK. OK and clicking on our notification here we see starting the test failover and clicking on that brings us over to our jobs again where it's checking our prerequisites, validating everything, and then going to create our test virtual machine. So what's going on over on that side of things? So remember, we had our Azure Academy DR resource group, and that's where the vault lived and our storage account, as well as our automation account. And then we had the source resource group, where we had our VM, our disk, our NIC, and our network. And then under the migration ASR resource group, we had our network set up here. And now we have our ASR replica disk. So what we're actually going to be doing as part of this failover process is we're going to build a new VM attaching this disk to it. So going back to our recovery vault, we can see here initiating the test failover is currently taking place and it's now creating the test VM. So if we go back to our ASR Okay, so step one here in the test has happened where we have copied this disk to a test disk. Okay, and there we have our VM being spun up now along with a NIC, and you can see that they are also appended with dash test. That is to keep them unique. And we can see that same VM here right next to the regular VM in the West region, which was our failover region, coming up with the same IP address. And these two will not be in conflict with each other because they are on two different virtual networks that cannot communicate with each other. Okay, so we've created the machine and now we're preparing it. So this is where we're attaching the disk, making sure that any of the configuration for availability set availability zone are being put in place. That we're going through attaching of any number of disks, configuring the network card for whatever has to happen, and it looks like this is done. So now, going back to our resource group, so we see we have the replica disk, and this is the, uh, the disk that is directly from uh, the other region where our, our primary disk is running in our storage account. So let's actually take a look at that. So here we have the Azure Academy DR resource group, and inside there we have the vault that we're replicating to and the cache storage account. And remember, this cache storage account is in the primary region. So back under disaster recovery, what we see here now is that we've done a successful failover and there's no current issues, but the status is that we are pending a cleanup. And that is because this is a test and Azure is aware of that. So we need to do a cleanup test failover. When we push this, we have the opportunity for adding some notes for what happened, how this went. And then we can check the box here that the test is complete and that we are okay to delete the test failover virtual machines and the other related resources. So that'll go through and take a minute or three. And you can see here that we have completed the checks for the cleanup, and now we are beginning the cleanup process. So I hope you've enjoyed this very first look at Azure Site Recovery in an Azure to Azure scenario. And we'll dig into uh, more complex scenarios in Azure to Azure, as well as Hyper-V and VMware-based scenarios going forward. Give us a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the Azure Academy, like the video, and click that notification icon we put out a new video roughly once a week. Keep your questions coming and happy learning.